today we are going to be continuing our bungee cord training specifically i'm going to be showing you how to make a bungee cord plugin having messages such as this one plus and then the player's name when i disconnect and when i connect into the game right here these are not coming from the paper server but actually from the bungee cord server itself i'm also going to be showing you how to create a bungee cord only command such as slash online which is going to list connected bungee cord players along with their server as well as how to navigate settings if i open up my plugins folder inside my bungee cord or waterfall server which we have made in the last video check it out if you haven't you can see that we have cocanon bungee folder inside of which we have a config right here so i'm going to be teaching you how to make a config like this and as well we're going to be talking about how to run things asynchronously how to deal with timers and finally how to check for a player permission so how do you actually make a bungee cord plugin first i do recommend you check the second video in this series because i'll explain what software i use i'm going to be using something called intellij i'll explain the process which buttons to click and most importantly i'll explain why things work today i'm going to be assuming that you completed a second video i'm also going to be assuming that you know how to make a basic paper plugin such that it contains events commands basic settings all of these concepts are already explained in great depth in this series at the very beginning it is the best to know how to make a paper or spigot plugin before diving into bungee cord because authors of bungee cord heavily inspire themselves from paper and bu bucket platform such that it is best if you already have that knowledge now having said that what i do recommend you go into file click new go to project and then right here generators if you don't see generators go ahead complete the second video in this series it'll teach you which plugin i use to get that option there so click generators the name can be anything say bungee cord plugin and then location can be whatever you wish to now the platform type is going to be bucket platform is going to be bungee cord and we're going to be building against the waterfall because it has more options as explained in the last video micro server can be the latest one plugin name we can leave it as the name and then the main class can be pretty much what the generator suggests if you don't don't understand these options i explained everything here in much greater details in the second video in this series so now what i can do is i can just create the project click this window and voila now we have a fully functional bungee cord plugin now we can just open up the pom file to just give you a quick overview so by the way this one uses java 1.8 if you want to use java 17 you can just change this to 17 now that's it that's the first thing the second thing is down below you'll notice that we have the waterfall mc api so you gonna want to have an eye on this if of course minecraft changes to 1.22 21 22 23 please make sure to change that as well great that's it if you've changed something what i do recommend you right click the file go to maven and hit reload project before developing now inside our source we have main folder inside of which we have two folders this is very similar to the structure of our minecraft plugin for bucket or paper spigot the only thing that's different right here with the first look is the bungee.yml file if you open it up this looks awfully similar to the minecraft plugin file unfortunately this is not very well documented so what i did i found the source code of this file and we can see that it does not have many options however most of those are actually named the same as their counterparts on paper such as name main version author depends now the thing that starts a bit different is the soft depends so if you want to add the same option you don't do this you actually do this okay just important thing to keep in mind file we don't use that description you can optionally have that there and then libraries uh this works the same as for plugin.yml so you can google how that works if you want to use it now closing that file let me go into the main plugins file it's called bungee cord plugin and now it extends plugin you'll notice that this file looks awfully similar to paper file except for the imports right here and some of the names so extends does not extend java plugin it only extends a plugin from the net.md5 bungee package some people ask me can i make a single plugin that loads both on bungee cord and 
speak good? The answer is yes. I do not recommend this because you will get so confused managing your imports, especially those that are exactly the same. For example, event handler when making events later on in this video, the name of it is exactly the same as for paper. However, the import is different guys. I do not recommend it. I do recommend you have a separate code just for Bungie isolated from the code from paper. But if you absolutely have to make a single jar file that will load on both, here is how to do so. You open up your palm and you simply duplicate a dependency and this one is going to be changed to the one that I teach you in the second video in this tutorial series. It's going to be paper, this one is going to be Bungie, and then this file right here, the bungie.yaml file, you'll also duplicate and the other one is going to be plugin.yaml and then Finally, you also duplicate the Bungie Core plugin class and you make the other class for Java plugin for paper and you put the main inside your plugin.yml. Again, not recommended, very confusing, but this is how to do it. Now, first things first in this class, I do recommend you keep an instance. The way I make the instance is very much the same to making a paper instance and as well as the getter right here. The reason I make an instance this way if this is the easiest way, I'm not saying this is the best way when making a banking application or not making a banking application for God's sake, we're just making a simple Bungie core plugin. All you're going to do is use this system and then you can use the instance from any other place in your plugin that you need to. Now, first things first, I'm going to be teaching you how to make events to create events class. Very simple. Let me just type in Bungie listener. This is going to implement listener the same way that we do it for paper plugins, except that the package, the listener package is actually different, just like this one. And then the way you, you register events right here, instead of calling get server, you call get proxy, get plugin manager, and then register listener plugin is this one. And then you simply create a new instance of it. Now, the events right here, you can find a list of on papermc.io. If you go to software, go for waterfall and hit Java doc right here, you can actually see two event packages right here. One, two, I'm going to be opening this one. This is the older one, the main one, uh, whereas the other one only works on paper. Now you can see that we don't have a bunch of, we don't have a whole bunch of events. There isn't an event regarding player clicking in an in inventory player dying. The reason for this is that the proxy does not store a player related information. Likewise, it does not store world related information. It does not know where is the diamond block. It does not know which items the player have in its inventory because it only forwards the packets. Of course, it will forward the packet with inventory block. And of course, there is a way to capture that packet, but it's really difficult. I'm not going to teach you in this, this video. I teach packets in a different video, so you can check that out. But the best way to manage this is to use plugin messaging channel, which is something that I'm going to teach you in the next video, and then actually get that information from the server that or that has the data written on the, the disk. The data do not exist physically on the disk on your Bungie Core server. Again, we only forward it to the specific player. So that is why you don't have a lot of events available. I'm going to be going with post login event right here. This event is called as soon as a connection uh, has a proxy player and is ready to be connected to a server. So basically when the player has been forwarded to a server, I'm going to be starting with exactly the same having event handler as for paper, and then simply type in on post login and finishing it off this way. I can get the player. This one is called proxy player like this, and then I can iterate through other proxy player online proxy player by getting proxy servers instance and getting players this way. This works the same way as getting bucket that get instance. And then I can simply send all online players a message that this player has joined the network. I can also use chat color similarly to bucket and the rest will be great. Let me compile. Let me show you how that will work. Now, quick tip when you are recompiling your plugin and having paper servers running, you can keep all of the paper servers running, saving time. All you have to reload is the bungee cord instance and then reconnect to it later on. So in the game, you can see second account has joined the network. I'm joined on this server. However, since we are broadcasting on the entire network, even the first player can see the same message, which, which is really cool. Again, should you send this message only on your paper server, 
only players on that particular server are going to see this. However, everybody connected through proxy will see messages being sent on the entire proxy. So this is a really nice way how to link your servers together. Now, you can also see the original message right here second account joined the game. This one is coming from the paper itself. To hide it, you have to create a paper plugin, listen to player join event, and then call event set message. And I think either setting it to null or empty would hide it on the bucket side of things. Great. Next up, we have commands. The way you create a command is actually surprisingly easy. All you're going to do, make a new tab list command class. I'm going to be having this command called tab list. Make this extend command from MD5 bungee package and then implement one method, which is a void. Works exactly the same way as on paper. However, it is way, way easier. And then there is no registration of the command on your inside your your bungee file so we don't do we don't type in commands right here all we're going to do is use the constructor to specify the properties of the command so the name of the command is actually what i'm going to type in in the game slash top list means i want to put the command label right here and if you want to specify permission and aliases you actually have to extend the super constructor which you can see right here so should i want to do this i just type in my plugin my permission for the command or command dot tab list and then comma and now comes the list of aliases tab or tl which will all execute this specific command. I'm not going to do this because I just want to make it as easy as possible. So all I do is I just type in tab list right here. You can also make the command implements tab executor, which will need one more method right here. This works exactly the same way as it works on paper. This will tap complete the command. Again, guys, if you need to learn more about this, we have a video on commands in this very free Minecraft tutorial series. Please check that out and then just make the appropriate adjustments for bun bungee cord. To execute this command, I already pre-prepared a simple message. Let me just change this to be a proper chat color. I don't like using this for whatever reason. I just don't like using it because in the old days, it always caused issues. Issues. That's why I always use the chat color, but you can also retain the old scheme for whatever reasons if you want to. So the that that command right here, I'm actually delete tap executor because I'm not going to use it right here. It will simply say connected bungee cord players, iterate through all of them, and then connect and then print out his name for each player and his server we actually get the server name by calling get info on get server and then you can also get a bunch of other server properties including which players are connected on that specific server finally to register this command go to your main plugin class open up the proxy get plugin manager and register the command this way now in the game if i type in tab list you can see it says myself i am on the survival server right here and then the other player is on the flat server and if i hit tab you can see that on the tab list these players are not connected together however if i type in the command you can see both of them are connected because the connection happens upstream the paper cannot see them but the proxy the waterfall or bungee cord can see them and that is why you can see them connected in the command now the next thing i want to show you is permissions this is very easy only going to check is online has permission works exactly the same way as on bucket moving on to another part of this video is settings settings are actually a bit more difficult let me just create a helper class for them which is going to contain a public static void load which is going to be using something called configuration provider which is a way for uh for bungee cord to load and to save the settings the way you create this class is you type in configuration provider dot get provider inside of which you need to actually specify yaml configuration which is awfully similar to the one on bucket now what you can type in is load and we can load a file containing our settings i already pre-created the config file inside my main java resources folder very simple file contains an example section and an example key so to get this file we can open up a new file we can go to our instance we can get the data folder and then we can get the file right here please note that this file will be loaded from your disk inside the plugins we don't have our data folder right here the data folder is simply the folder by the name of your plugin this is the data folder inside of which we're going to be having the file so if the file exists, we're just going to load it, making sure to surround it with a try and catch block if there is any problem. However, before, if the file does not exist, what do we have to do? We have to first make sure to create the data folder, this one. 
So we have to open up files from java.neo package. This is the easiest way to do this. And then hit create directories and then get the instance, get the data folder this way. Now also that one requires us to convert the file into a path class. And this one is also sensitive to throwing an error. So we have to copy this, paste it underneath the try block. Now we have to actually have another try block, which will open up an input stream, which will then copy the config file from inside our jar inside right here, inside this folder right here. So the way we do this is very simple. You call the main plugin, you get the instance of it, and then you call get resource as stream. And then you type in the config name of the resource inside your jar, which is the same as the file on our disk. And then inside the try block, the reason I'm using a try block is that when you're dealing with input streams, you also have to close them in the end. So in the old days, we would have to call in.close, but nowadays in Java, we can just use the try block and it's going to auto close it after it's been copied properly automatically. Inside of that block, all we have to open is the same file from Java package and then type copy input stream. So from, from the input stream, which is the file inside our jar to the file on our disk, which we've created right here. And then we also have to convert it to a path. That's pretty much it. Let me just open up my bungee cord plugin, call settings, load, and show you guys how that, this will work. So I have deleted the folder, which we have made during our explanation. Now it properly created the folder once again, inside of which we have our config inside the config. We have all of our keys. Now, if I do close it and I start it again, it should respect that the config is already there. Changing this to something else and reloading it will not nuke your config. Now question is how can we actually get the keys from it and how can we save it if you want to make any adjustments to it? Good question. So to do so, we can just externalize these two variables and convert them into a private static field. And likewise, we're going to be needing the configuration field that is used to get our values. So if you pay attention to the loading method, you can see that that one actually returns a configuration object, which we can assign to the field right here. And then we can simply create a static void save, which will simply get the provider called the save method. Now the save method also requires the configuration instance to be put right here. So make sure to only call the save after you've loaded it first. We can also call get config to retrieve the configuration right here, such that I can go to the main plugins class and I can type in example key and I can open up settings, get config. And here it works literally the same as in bucket. And you can even set the, the keys uh, using this way after which if you call save, it is going to save the key properly. So I'm going to get the string at our example section and example key. And then when I launch the plugin, I'll actually say example key Slovakia is the best country in the world. Surprise, surprise is because I've changed the key behind the scenes. Finally, before we end this video, how do you actually run tasks later? Similarly to bucket, we can use the get proxy get scheduler. However, to your surprise, there is only schedule methods right here and then run async. The way it works, there isn't main beat thread. There isn't a main thread on bungee cord. Everything is run asynchronously. So the way you do this is you just call schedule plugin is the honor. So this one, the task is can be can be made into a lambda. The delay can be, I don't know, one. And then, however, this is the biggest difference from Bungie, uh, from Bucket, is that Bungie does not operate in ticks, but it operates in plain Java units. So it actually asks for what this one is. It does not understand the one. So we have to provide that this is actually a second, meaning if I type in, hey there, it'll actually be displayed one second later. And this is then displayed after the server has finished loading. If you want to operate on ticks, you'd have to change this to milliseconds and know that one tick equals to, to 50 milliseconds because 20 ticks, as I explained in my previous videos, are just one second. 20 ticks is one second, such that 20 times 50 is 1000, which is one second as well. A little bit of math right here. So just remember that if you want to run it one tick later, just type in 50 times milliseconds. Of course, if you want to run it 10 ticks later, just multiply 50 by 10 ticks. That's it for this video. If you want to dive deeper into Minecraft programming, we actually have a full course called Project Orient, which is a seven week Java Minecraft plugin, which means paper, spigot and bucket and bungee cord training course 
which has also myself personally sitting live on a Zoom call twice per week, answering any questions. And if you don't like the course, we have a full 30 day money back guarantee. Check out the course below. The link is in the description of this video. Now, I do hope that you enjoyed this series. In the next video on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe to motivate me to get going. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can actually connect to your paper plugin from Bungie Court and vice versa using something called plugin messaging channel.